Hi everyone. In the last section, we built a mortgage calculator and touched on some important programming concepts. In this section, we're going to cover some changes that's happened with deployment and also touch on the topic of hosting and then wrap up the course. Specifically, we're going to briefly talk about ASP.NET Core and its ability to be cross-platform. Then we'll move on to talk about GitHub. And then finally, the best approaches to coding and keeping up with C-Sharp and .NET. So for now, Let's kick it off with .NET Core and its ability to be cross-platform. There's two specific things I'd like to show you in this video. The first is how Microsoft is working to develop the new .NET Core to be able to successfully deploy self-contained applications. That is one way they define it as being cross-platform because you can be in Visual Studio on Windows and should be able to deploy an application so that it can run on a separate environment. The second is that you can also just install .NET Core on a separate environment such as Linux or a Mac and we're going to go ahead and demo that. But let's first talk about the concept of a self-contained deployment. ASP.NET Core is a free and open source web framework and it's really the next generation of ASP.NET that's developed by Microsoft. Now one of its main features is the fact that it's uh, open source and it also cross-platform. There's a lot more to it but we're going to be focused on the fact that it's cross-platform and that's what this demo is about. Right now I just brought up a simple web application that I had created just by going to file new project and going through the steps that you would to create a uh, simple web application. I chose web and then chose ASP.NET Core. Once this application is set, theoretically we should be able to publish this so that we could run it on a separate environment. And the way that you do that is by configuring your project JSON file. So what I did was I first added the runtimes that I wanted to give me the options to deploy to and that is in the section here for runtimes and I added osx.10.11-x64 and then there was one other line that I needed to remove and I'll show it to you from a different application under dependencies where it says type colon platform and what that does is it makes sure it includes all the dependencies that it needs. So there's a little bit more overhead but it has everything that it needs so that the environment that you're going to run it on does not have to have .NET installed. So as you can see at the very top here under dependencies I don't have that line. So now if I try to publish by right clicking on my project and then choose publish the first time you do this, it'll have you create a profile. I already created a profile called Test 6. If I go to Settings, I'm able to choose my framework and runtime. And when I publish, it should publish the files that I need in order to run it on a different environment. Now, the thing is, this is still kind of a work in progress because it was just a few months ago that the approach to doing this was using another concept called DNX and things are changing that pretty quickly. So this is just something to kind of keep in mind. I would not try to use this in any way for uh, production because they're still working out the kinks because when I published it, it did not come out the way that the documentations, the latest documentations described it. So it is something that they are working on and it is going to be very cool when it's finally done and said. However, having said that, the other way this new framework is still considered cross-platform is by the fact that you can install and code .NET applications on a Mac or a separate environment. So let me go ahead and show you how you would do that. There's two ways. One, if you go to Microsoft's site, there's some documentation that you can follow. If you go to Microsoft slash net slash core, there's some steps that you can follow 
to install a package manager called Brew and then install some software that will set your pass and everything that you need in order to be able to install the .NET environment. Okay, so you can follow this. Many developers have their own uh, ways of doing this because, like I said, it's kind of still in the works and some approaches are better than others really depending on your experience and what environment you're most comfortable with. I chose to use Yeoman and that's going to be what I'm going to show you. But it's really up to you. You can go ahead and follow this or the steps that I'm about to show you. But either way, in the end, um, we're going to have like an environment on a separate platform that's non-Windows that you can run a .NET application. So let's go ahead and start by showing how to install .NET Core on a Mac. The only prerequisite is that you have Node and the Node Package Manager installed. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to our terminal. So we can just go to Finder and type in Terminal. That should bring up our terminal. Afterwards, we can go ahead and create a directory that we're going to be working in. So let's type in Make Directory and call it My Web App. All right, and to install Yeoman, we can simply type in npm install dash dash global yo. Let it run through. Now you want to look at the documentation if you come into any type of errors, any permissions while it's installing. Sometimes the system needs to be configured. Okay, looks like it went through. And let's check the version. 1.8. Looks good. After you've installed Yeoman, you need to install a generator. Yeoman uses the concept of generators. So we'll need to type in npm install dash g generated dash aspnet. This might take a few minutes, so I'll go ahead and skip ahead. All right, now it's complete. So the next command that we're going to want to enter is yo aspnet. All right, great. Looking good so far. Okay, so now ASP.NET installer is going to be asking us a few questions. Uh, the first is what type of application do you want to create? We're going to go ahead and keep things simple and choose web application basic without membership and authorizations. Um, the reason why is otherwise it would add a lot of complexity that we really don't need to address right now. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. Then the next thing it wants to ask is what UI framework would you like to use? We're going to keep it simple and just choose Bootstrap. And then what's the name of your application? I'm going to go ahead and write my web app. And so now when you are at this state on Mac, this is what we mean by being cross-platform because we essentially are at the same state that you are on a Windows to run the Windows application. So for example, if we were to go to Windows, and I'm going to go ahead and create a basic .NET Core web app. I'll choose web and ASP.NET Core web application, and it'll be called web application 7. I'll create that. I'll select web application. Make sure host and cloud is not selected. And now, on my right-hand side, if I were to go right-click and open a folder in Explorer, this will allow me to get the path. So I'll copy that. And now I will go to the command prompt. And you can run .NET from the command prompt. So let me change the directory to where we just copied. And from here, I can type in .NET help. And we'll see we essentially have the same commands that we saw on the map. We can restore, we can build, we can publish. On either environment, you should be able to type in 
restore.net restore actually. It will obtain its dependencies that it needs. And when that's done, do .NET run. It does its compiling and begins running, and it tells you what hosts to look at in your web browser, localhost 5000. So at this point, I can bring in a web browser, enter in localhost 5000, and it brings up our application whether we're in Windows or on the Mac. Now, if you are on the Mac and you ran into any type of issues installing Yeoman, the website yeoman.io slash learning has documentation you would need that steps you through the installation process. And if you come into any type of errors regarding permissions, there's a link here that has some more details on how to handle that. Okay? In this video, we demonstrated how to install .NET on a Mac. Just keep in mind the .NET Core is still evolving. And while there might be a few bugs you may encounter here and there, the changes that have been made have been really great, and the fact that it's open source is another big bonus. So while the effort to become cross-platform is a big undertaking, it's definitely worth the wait.